Good morning. First home game of the season. How are you feeling about that, bearing in mind Cardiff's record at home? Um, I just think it's an exciting time for everybody at the club, really. You know, is it going to be a cracking crown? I mean, nearly a full house, you know, and it's uh, it's what we've been striving for, really, since, um, I mean, when I came to the club, if you'd have said we'd have been playing in front of a full house in 18 months' time, you know, they'd have thought I was in cloud cuckoo land. So it's a great, it's a great feeling, and um, I think it's a good club to be playing, Newcastle. I think, you know, Rafa's... Got them in the top ten last year, didn't they? So, you know, they've got some good players and they always got a great following. So, I remember at the end of the first season when they got promotion, they played us at the end of the season and the fans were unbelievable. And I said, I remember turning to Kevin Blackwell and saying, we want some of this, don't we? Look at their fans here. The, you know, it was brilliant. So, it, it promises to be a good atmosphere all around tomorrow. There's no doubt about it. They're going to be targeting this as a game that they'll want to win, a game they can win. Yeah. I suspect you're feeling the same. Does that make it a more toothsome clash, do you think? I don't think so, really. I think from from their point of view, I think, not just their point of view, I think every club in the league will think it's a winnable game playing Cardiff. It's just, how are we going to be this year? I think it's, uh, you know, we've got to improve and, and we've got to try and use the full squad as best we can. Um, and I, th I think that the home games in particular, with the fans, we've got to take it on board how exciting it is, really, and, and let's give them something to cheer about. And we sort of perhaps a little bit romantically talk about the fans being the 12th man, but you are the guys at the coalface at the sharp end. How realistic is that? How valuable is it? Well, they are. I mean, they, they've, they've been on this quite remarkable journey, really, the fans. And, uh, you know, it's really turned a full cycle, uh, uh, you know, since I've been here, the, the whole club. And they've played a big part, really, not just at home, but the away fans have been fantastic as well, which, you know, you get your hardcore away from home. Um, but it is an intimidating place at, at this Cardiff City Stadium when, when they're all in full song. You know, the Welsh anthem still sends shivers up my spine and I'm a bloody Englishman. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an amazing place, really. And with the Geordies being on board, I mean, let's be fair, the Geordies are unbelievable. I think they're unbelievable. 50-odd thousand every week and they haven't won anything for a long time. It's, uh, they, they're just fantastic supporters. So I think it's two good groups here that have been so loyal to both clubs. It's an amazing scene, and we want. Obviously, we'd love to be uh, in their boat where they're established themselves in the top level. Um, but we've we've got a lot of work to do to get to that level at the moment. You see chinks in their armour this season. Some of the fans not happy about them, perhaps not having reinforced to the extent that they would have wanted over the summer. Do you see real chinks in the Newcastle armour? I think that's a little bit of hot air, really. I think you know, I think. Uh, different people play things differently don't they and I think you know if you look at their investment and the players I think they've improved the squad from last year and they finished 10th last year so you know I don't really know much more where they could improve really um, so I think I think it's a bit tongue-in-cheek there I think Mike Ashley's an, an easy easy target isn't it really let's blame him yeah. you were mentioning about the fact everybody will think of Cardiff will target Cardiff as a game that, that they're going to win um, but I was listening to somebody on the radio this morning saying that they think that of all the 20 managers in the top flight, Neil Warnock is the most determined and who still has a point to prove in the Premier League. Do you recognise yourself in those terms? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I already know it'll be, you know, 100 times anything, anything else I've done in my career to keep us in the league, knowing all the circumstances. So it's a great challenge because I know I'm going to get some flack along the way, you know, but... You know, that's why I'm still in the game, really. I'm in the game for days like tomorrow. You know, I've got goose pimples now thinking about coming out and that, that noise and the volume and looking around the stadium, a packed house. You know, it's, it's fantastic, really. I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm honoured to be the manager. And, and they've helped me achieve. The fans have been really pivotal in me getting my eighth promotion, which is what I set out to do when I came to the club. So it, it's a two-way thing now. I want to repay them by having some enjoyment. And would you say you are going to be the most determined manager in the Premier League this season? Bearing in mind there are a number of new managers who have come in. Some of them have had Premier League experience before. But a number of people saying that, that you know, you're the man who's going to want this more than anybody else. I think, I think because, uh, I suppose, on father time, um, it's not been beneficial to me really. I think because of the stage of my career, and the financial situation that we're dealing with, it, you know, it, you know, it just makes you more determined. Really, we all have to work harder. We all have to put, you know, more of a shift in. And the players know that. You know, we spoke to them, the staff. You know, we've not, you know, I look at some of the 
visitors coming to our stadium this year, they have a bus for the staff. You know, you know we've still got a little taxi for hours. So, um, you know, there are comparisons, but hey-ho, you know, it's 11 against 11, 30-odd thousand Cardiff fans. It's, it's to be really, you know, we've got to look forward to this. And finally from me, um, obviously one game played, and you'll have been aware about some of the comments that have come from certain pundits, particularly one former Blackburn and Chelsea striker. Um, are those comments can be pasted up on the wall in the dressing room. Do you use that as a galvanising uh, tool? Or are you actually, frankly, irritated after just one game that those sorts of comments have been made? Not really. I think it was a bit tongue-in-cheek, if I'm honest. You guys you know, and ladies, you, you, you pick on little things, don't you? And I suppose Chris was playing to the playing to the audience really uh, it will be nice to get to 12 points I must admit uh, but uh, at the moment we've got pressing other pressing things in our minds you know Newcastle's first and foremost and uh, we are aware you know uh, the Arsenal manager's no good is it because he's you know they've lost the game and I'm afraid that comes with the territory that doesn't it you just have to take it on board and and do the best you can thank you good luck and enjoy it thank you very much Neil, what do you think the players learned last week? Um, lessons that they'll need to learn pretty quickly. Um, I think, really, um, there's nothing to be afraid of. Really, I think we've got to, you know, we've got to, you know, I think we have to improve the squad, the team, from last week, uh, and we can do that with, 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 you know, with certain lads that we've come in and other other lads becoming fit. Uh, and I think the next couple of games will show us more. Um, but I thought we were in the game right to the end. At, at, you know, at Bournemouth, and um, you know, I, can, I see some of the the criticism, but I don't see that. I thought they did ever so well. Me personally, if it say it was the first game and the team that we put out, I was quite pleased with it really. And uh, you know, disappointed to you know have to gamble and throw another goal away at the death. But I think you might as well lose two as one, aren't you? Really? You said that every team will see Cardiff as a, as a winnable game, and I suppose a lot of teams will see Newcastle. Newcastle is a winnable game. When the two of you meet, is there a significance to this? Because probably you both set up for finishing 15th, 16th, 17th. If you win, you not only get three points, you, you damage another rival. Yeah, I think Newcastle and, and beneath the surface will be, you know, I think be quite confident to finish a lot higher than that, if I'm honest. You know, they were in the top 10 last year and they've improved the squad. So I think they'll be looking to be in that top half the table without a shadow of a doubt we're just looking to get as many points as we can obviously the earlier the ones you know when you look at uh, the people point out the fixtures that we've got coming up you know I, I think we're capable of getting results against anybody at home and then we've got to try and pinch one or two away are we likely to see Harry Arter this week yeah you'll definitely see him in the 18 yeah is he likely to play he's likely to be in the 18 <laughs> How keen is he to... to, to, to he's... Uh, he's um, I mean, I was speaking to Eddie after the game. He's, he's such an effervescent and, and enthusiastic young man. that It's just great. I used to have a lad at Sheffield United called Tom Cowan. He wasn't the best full-back in the line, but when I saw him in the morning, he made me happy. He made me so glad that I come into work because he just loved every day. And, and this lad's just like that. When I watch him, you know, if, you know, when he's on the training ground, he's just full of it, full of beans. And, you know, Eddie said, you know, I think they paid 4,000 quid for him all them years ago, and he's come up through the, the leagues. And yet he's got no airs or graces about him. He is what he is. I want to play football, Eddie. That's all he said to him, to the gaffer. Can I go and play football? And, and that's what he wants to do. And, and we're delighted to have him. He's a, he's a lovely lad. And... Uh, I think he can give us another, an, you know, another dimension. As I, I do think uh, that Victor can as well. You know, when when he comes up to, when he gets used to the, the temp. Mm. Ken Zahor, how fit is he? Well, he's. he's uh, I, I think he's going to be training fully today. Uh, we've had to just be careful with him this week um, because obviously a groin injury can soon, de you know, become a, a more significant thing. So I think we just have to be careful with him, and uh, we'll make an assessment. Probably this afternoon, really, or in the morning, to see if he can start. Or you know, I'm hoping he'll definitely be on the bench. But we'll see if he can start. You know, when we've when we've had a look at him today and to, and, to, and see if there's any reaction in the morning. Newcastle also started with a with a defeat at home. Um, what did you make of that game against Spurs? 
Well, I think, you know, there again, I think, you know, Tottenham's one of the, the best clubs in the country. So, uh, whilst I think they had the opportunities, they, you know, they hit the bar and what have you, didn't they? They had definitely had opportunities to get a result. Um, I don't think the seasons are defined by the top six. I think anything you get, you know, but Newcastle, like us, uh, they have to make it a fortress at home, and, and I think they will, really. So, it's, um, you know, I think it's one of those things that... Um, we both end up playing each other now, and, and we're both looking for points. How would you assess the job that uh, Rafa Benitez has done? Well, I think you've only got to look at the the um, what the fans are saying, what they and what all the pundits are saying. Really, um, you know, I think the one person that Newcastle can't afford to lose is is Rafa. You know, I think they can get away with any player, but you know, his commitment to Newcastle. Um, has been fantastic. He's in his last year now, so it'll be interesting to see how, how that develops. Because I'm sure worldwide he'll be he'll be targeted with him being in his last year. You've talked before about uh, locking horns with him once or twice. Is uh, <laughs> is there a red needle between the two? Uh, it surprises me you bringing that up, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, you know, um, well, I think that's a you know I think everything's been said about that, and and you know we've met a few times since then. So, funnily enough, I was talking to Craig Bellamy this morning at the academy. He actually played in the game that I was disputing when he played for Liverpool. He was telling me how they had three days off uh, before, and the other lads weren't bothered either. So, uh, it was good conversation. Right. The, the infamous letter, have you still got that or not? No, I know. I th I don't, I'm not sure it was a letter. It might have been an email. I can't remember what it was. Right. But all, all water under the bridge? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The life's too short, isn't it? It's going to, we've got to enjoy, I've got to enjoy this now, you know, with a, with a full house. And if you'd have told me, you know, when I came in, we'd be playing Rafa's side. We have a full house. You know, it's incredible. So, you know, let's, we've got to really enjoy it. hope we can give them a good game. And I hope it's a cracking game for television and, and our fans go home enjoying the match. You had a fantastic atmosphere at home last season, Neil. How do you replicate that in terms of... Transferring it into performance and particularly results. Well, I think we've I think we've improved as a squad as well as well as like I said, Newcastle have improved. So I think we're getting, but you know we can get better. Um, I think when the new lads have, have, have fitted in well, and I think that you know if we can get them up to up to the speed, um, I think we can cause a different problems for different teams, home and away, if I'm honest. Um, but it's like anything else, you know, you've got to try and go with, with what you believe can get you a result and, and make sure you... The difference here now is you, you, you've got players, everybody's got players that can change a game on the bench. I've never, you know, when I come, you know, I don't think my missus could have changed the game, let alone the sub. So it, it's great how far we've come on, you know. And given that you've got some tough games coming up, uh, this game, the Huddersfield game, does that give them a bit more significance or do you still see... Each game is a winnable game. I think we've got as much chance of beating Arsenal as Newcastle. I don't, you know, I, I understand what, what you're saying, but I don't, I don't worry too much at home about who we're playing, you know, and I think um, away from home we are capable, I think as we get into the season now and we get everybody fit and up and running, I think we are capable of going away from home and getting results. So, you know, I, I, know, I understand there's, there's probably games more difficult than others, but every game's difficult to us. So it's just the, 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 the ones that, you know, the top six, you've got to say are, you know, are, are the most difficult games. But, but I think, you know, every game is really difficult for us. Anything surprise you about the opening week, or did it all feel? No, I was I was pleased to get out of the way, if I'm honest, and and look at the game back. Uh, disappointed in the goals, I thought we could have defended those better. Um, lads making the wrong decisions at times, and and not like like what we're good at really in the box. But the broader experience um, of being back in the yeah, it was. I thought it was a like I say from a manager's point of view. I think all you can do is try and make sure you're in a game. And, and I thought we were in the game right to the death last week, and you know that's what we're going to be this week. Just finally, Neil, what, what's the situation with with loan deals in terms of players going out? Uh, well, that'll all be decided before the end of the month. You know, we've got a couple yesterday. Um, I think I've let certain players speak to clubs and seeing if they want to go certain areas, and well, and that'll all come up in uh, over the next week, ten days, won't it? Nothing imminent this weekend. Not really. One lad speaking to, you know, one of the clubs wanted him, one, one of the players uh, on loan to be on the bench tomorrow, you know. Uh, so I don't know whether that'll come off. I've just not had time to, to speak to the player at the moment. So, But nobody going for definite yet. Thanks,
Neil, you said when you got here that things couldn't you couldn't change things off the bench. <coughs> Josh Murphy <coughs> looked to to really up things when he came on last Saturday. Has he given you something to, to think about his performance? Um, you mean when he, he gave the second goal away? <laughs> but also he, he added a bit of zip going forward, didn't he? He did, yeah. He's, but he's just got to learn he's got to do other things in his game as well, you know. Um, but he's a lovely lad. He wants to work. He's full of... You know, when I look at Harry Arter, who, who, who's been in it and seen it and done it all, and then you look at Murph. Murph really wants to please me and the fans every training session, every moment. You know, um, some of the things he does in training, and, and I think, oh my goodness, you know, when you, you know, you know, Pelty is going to kick him, and and Lloyd Demore is going to kick him, but he still does it. You know, I think it's uh, it's just a, a breath of fresh air to see people like that, and I'm I'm really pleased. Him and Bobby Reed, there's such a breath of fresh air that. Um, you know they can't. They want to play every every day. So I think he's got. A, I think he can improve. I think we'll improve him when he knows I can trust him away from home or on defensive side. You know, he, he, I'm not asking him to do anything that he can't do. He's just got to learn that if he do, if he makes a wrong decision in a second, it costs us a goal. And I think he'll learn that after last week. He said goals might be a problem. But Chances were few and far between, frankly, for both sides last week, weren't they? Well, our goalie never had a shot. I mean, nobody said anything about that, have they? But, uh, you know, you get games like that, really, don't you? So, can someone like Zaho make a difference if, if he is fit? Is, is he that oh, player? absolutely. I mean, you've seen, we, we've all seen what Ken Zaho is about. You know, we need Kenzo to, 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 to function and to get in that 10 to 15 goal bracket, you know. Um, as everybody says, strikers at that mould are few and far between, especially when you come up. And, you know, I mean, I think Fulham spent 25 million, didn't they, on, on Mitrovic? And, and, you know, you can see why, because he's going to score 10 to 15 goals. So, you know, we're hoping that our Kenzo Ho can do that, really. And the, the home atmosphere you've talked about. Will you have time tomorrow to just take it in and, and just realise how far you've come in? I think before kickoff, yeah. I think once the whistle goes, no, no, I don't think so. But I think before kickoff, it's a it's a great place. You know, you want to look, have a look round the stadium tomorrow, everybody. You know, and and we've all played our part, not just me. Um, you know, I think Vincent, hopefully, I think he was trying to get tomorrow. I don't know whether he's finalised it yet. But, you know, Mehmet, who's, who's been my biggest fan, my biggest supporter since I've been here, I couldn't have done anything without him and, and Ken Chua. You know, and then you go right the way through the staff. I think all the staff from the shop girls right the way through have played their part. And, and then the, the fans have been unbelievable. So it's, it's, it really makes me feel proud that the whole club's together now. And, and that's how football club should be, you know. It's it's it, it's a um, not life or death, as Shankly used to say. But I think I think when you care passionately about your own club, it's great for you to 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 be around at times like this. And and I do speak to a lot of fans and some of the young kids who who this is the first year, you know, or last year was the first year. And it's important because it'll be there for the rest of their lives. Uh, they'll remember certain games when there's excitement and things forever and ever, you know. So we want to give them something to go home at night after the game talking about, really, like the olden days. And how do you stop the players <laughs> listening to pundits always writing them off? How do you stop that effect in them? Um, well, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, you know, I have enough myself without worrying about the bloody players. Uh, they write me off every week, don't they? So it's. Um, but you're used to it, that's what I mean. Yeah, but I think the lads, you know, it's one of those things. You have a bad game and you get written off, and then the next week, you, you know, you look like a Premier League player. We are going to be tainted with that all year I, I, th I think we've got quite a lot of Premier League players me I think most of the squad are definitely capable of playing at the top level and, and that's why I'm looking forward with the new additions to see how we can play because I think we can you know play a lot more uh, and make it enjoyable